Um, it, it's true. I'm, I'm, I'm not a stranger here. I, I, uh, I don't get to see you all nearly as much as I would like, but um, the history goes back a long way. I'm, I'm pleased that uh, so many people remember my wife Tammy and myself and have come up and, and given greetings. I think the last time I was actually on this platform performing was when I was helping with the Sunday School in 1993 and I helped with the Christmas play. I was thinking that was the last time I was up here. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's been quite a long time. Um, as I said, when, when uh, you know, my relationship with, with Pastor Renee and uh, uh, Pastor Jennifer go a long way back and, uh, and co-working with Pastor Renee in a number of uh, ministry opportunities, particularly in the early days. I came just to, for those of you that don't know myself and my wife, I came here as a young single man in 1990. You know, you know what I'm finding is difficult is when I teach at Island City Church, our church over in Hong Kong Island, it's translated into Cantonese and I'm, I'm trying to get used to not stopping and waiting for the translation. <laughs> um, I came in 1990 as a young single man, just a backpack over my shoulder. And uh, I remember my first Sunday morning was actually at Revival Church when I used to meet on, on Prince Edward. Um, my wife, my future wife, walked through the door. I, I was still recovering from jet lag. I was new to Hong Kong. Everything was a blur. Everything was, was new and, and, I, and I was a little disorientated. And suddenly this woman walked through the door. 20 years old, and uh, my first thought was, wow, this place is really starting to pick up a little bit. <laughs> a year and a half later, we were married, and, uh, and uh, I, I really appreciate, um, I, I can say with, with, with uh, Pastor Rene, uh, as a young minister, I used to travel with him a lot in the early days, and he really helped me. He really mentored me in a number of areas. When, when I had questions, he helped guide me. So I really appreciate um, the, the relationship that, that I've been able to maintain with him over the years. And now that I'm a little older, I get to, I have the privilege of being able to reciprocate and do that with some younger people coming up under me. Uh, currently, I am, before we get to the word, um, I, 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 I was here for 10 years, uh, and I ended up planting Island City Church in 1995. Uh, one of the passions my wife and I really have is bringing um, Jesus into non-traditional areas, into areas that a lot of times people don't like to maybe go into. Um, so we started a church in Lang Kwai Fong in the, uh, in the nightclub area. And uh, we, we started that in 1995. And in 1999, uh, we felt it was time to go back to the States. And we, uh, we church planted in Colorado. And uh, uh, we were there for a number of years. But in 2005, we came back. We were invited to the 10th anniversary of Island City Church. They were doing a big celebration for the 10th anniversary. They invited us to come back. And I remember, it was 2005, we were walking the streets of Hong Kong. My wife was shaking. She was so excited to be back in Hong Kong. She just looked over at me and she said, honey, I want to come home. And uh, I thought, oh goodness, now I've got to figure out how we're going to get back to Hong Kong. <laughs> and uh, God in his ways, it's a, it's a wonderful story I could share another time, but uh, God just opened up a wonderful opportunity. I'm currently... Um, working with Yu Chung Education Foundation and Yu Chung International School. I serve as their chaplain and I get to oversee a number of their uh, ministry opportunities uh, in China as well. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's great being back and it's great to be with you with, great to be back with you this morning. I, uh, <clears throat> during the prayer when they talked about the storm it got me thinking, that's, that's actually what I'm going to share on today, is storms, storms in our lives. Um, can I have, is the PowerPoint available? Um, if I have a, uh, when I first met the Luciers, I didn't need reading glasses. Us <laughs> neither. <laughs> you know, it's horrible. Um, my message this morning is called to calm storms. And um, you know Hong Kong, and I know many of you from the Philippines, uh, we're used to big storms. We, we live in a place that big storms happen. Uh, last Sunday night, we had a, uh, a big 
storm. And did anybody see in Festival Walk? Facebook was showing all those pictures. Yeah, um, it was it was it was very crazy. And um, you know, the isn't it funny that we get these black rains always on Sunday night, never Monday morning? <laughs> is it what what is what what's up with that? I don't I don't understand why that. I I uh, I can, can I get the next? Um, is there a does anybody remember a few months ago we had Typhoon Usagi came through? This was last September. And uh, everyone was saying, you might not remember it because it actually didn't turn out to be as big as we all thought it was. Everybody was saying it was, was going to be the big one. This one's going to be, you know, if our, if our uh, typhoon ratings go to 10, this one's going to 11. Everybody batting down the hatches. And um, what ended up happening was, I remember I was preaching that morning and I was going... Um, across the central on the ferry and I was thinking wow this is you know I better I better hurry up and preach and maybe we need to even call it a little early to get people home and it turns out it was actually nothing nothing really the, the the storm veered away and that's like so many things so many storms that hit us in our lives when we look back they tended to not be quite as big as they were when we were actually going through them in fact Monday morning, everybody thought we were at, at school. I, I, um, every morning I have to do an assembly, a 10 minute assembly and uh, for 800 to 900 teenagers. That's, that's why when Pastor Rene called me and asked me if I would speak this morning, I never get scared of speaking to new crowds because I speak to 900 teenagers every single day. And I told them the reason, I, I joked with them, the reason that I, um, that Usagi um, missed us was because in church that morning I prayed. And everybody came up to me, we didn't get a day off because God answers your prayers? <laughs> Can we get the next? Uh... But the Bible mentions storms for a, num a number of times and for good reason. They serve as a metaphor for the trials and hardships we face in life. One minute the sun is shining and all is beautiful. And then without warning, a storm suddenly brings fear and damage in its wake. I think we've all been in those kind of situations. Everything seems to be going well. Everything, our spiritual lives are going well, our, our, maybe our work lives, our family lives, our relationship with spouse, with children, things are going well. And then suddenly something happens. Something comes out of nowhere. The, the, the skies turn black, metaphorically, and you wonder, how did we get into this situation? If you could turn with me, the uh, portion of scripture we're going to look at is very familiar to many of us. Luke chapter 8, verse 22. One day... Starting in verse 22, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's go over to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and set out. As they sailed, he fell asleep. A squall came down on the lake so that the boat was being swamped, and they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. Now, when you read this, when I read this, um, I started thinking, you know, these guys, most of them were fishermen. Most of them are pretty familiar with conditions on the water. They, they know boating. They've been in storms before. They understand. So if they think they're going to drown, if I'm on a boat with you and I say we're going to drown, you have reason to doubt, OK? <laughs> but if expert seamen, if Peter, Lifetime fishing, lifetime on the water, says we're going to drown, that's the time to be scared. How many, we, many of us live in Hong Kong, we fly a lot. You know, we're pretty used to international flying. I, I'm sure you probably do the same thing I do. You hit turbulence. I, I find as I get older, I hate turbulence. And the older I get, the more I hate it. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I just, I, before we, I, I, I don't like to fly, and I'm in a lifestyle where I have to fly all the time. And uh, so I'm hit, when you hit turbulence, do you look at the flight attendants to see, how, are they nervous? 
because they're the experts. Like Peter, like the, they, they're used, they fly all the time. They fly, I mean, I fly a fair bit, but they fly every day. So if they're at the, if, if the, the uh, plane is bumping and I see they're still serving coffee, I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> okay, I'm feeling pretty good. Now, just a few months ago, I was flying back from Europe on Emirates. We're flying uh, somewhere from Dubai to Hong Kong. And we were hitting that turbulence, you know, the one that just makes your face, like all the blood drain from your face. <laughs> And uh, so I'm looking at the flight attendants, and suddenly the flight attendant next to me, she runs up to me. I had a seat next to me, and she goes, do you mind if I sit in and buckle next to you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when the flight attendant gets up, or, or nervous, that's when I get nervous. Fortunately, she started dialing into the uh, onboard, comp you know, the, uh, that shows you where the plane is in location um, on the map. And she said, oh, we're going over the Himalayas. It's okay. You know, and as she's saying this, we're bam, bam, bam. You know, everybody's locked down. She goes, we, we get this uh, somewhat frequently coming over the Himalayas. It's, it's going to be okay. Her saying it was going to be okay in that moment calmed the storm that I had raging in my heart at that moment. Uh, and so I can appreciate where the disciples are at this moment. Seasoned fishermen think they're going to drown. Master, master, we're going to drown. But he, Jesus, got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided and all was calm. Where is your faith, he asked his disciples. In fear and amazement, they asked one another, Who is this that he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him? Next slide, please. Now, I know how the disciples felt. Do you ever feel sometimes when there's a storm going on in your life that Jesus seems to be asleep? Let's be honest. Yes. yes. There are times where it seems like everything is going pear-shaped. Everything is going wrong. Things are not right. And you're wondering, why does it seem like Jesus is asleep? And you can almost see the agitation in the disciples. Doesn't he understand the situation we're in? When your little boat is threatening to be engulfed, God sometimes seems unconcerned. Sometimes. Why did Jesus seem unconcerned? How could he be at rest when all around him was in a frenzy? Next slide. Because he knew he was going to the other side. The first thing that those disciples should have relied on Jesus said at the beginning of the story, let us go to the other side. In that moment, those disciples should know it doesn't matter what happens between this side and that side. It may be smooth sailing. It may be clear, clear water. It could be a slight breeze. It could be slightly choppy. Or it could be a terrifying storm that threatens to engulf them. It doesn't matter because we're going to the other side. He spoke it. And Jesus, because he knew what his father had for him to do, he's at rest. He's in peace. He's in the, at peace in the midst of the storm. When we understand the eternal destiny of our lives, no temporal storm will derail us. See, God has an incredible mission for us. We get to announce the kingdom of heaven. We get to call people to be citizens of a whole new way of living. Jesus came and restructured culture. He restructured the way things are done. He asked the disciples to join him in that. And in the midst of them doing it, storms are gonna happen. Storms are gonna come. But because Christ knew what the eternal plan of God was, no temporal storm could derail him. 
And that's something that I think every one of us needs to, to have in our heart. That it, when we keep our eyes focused on eternity, when we keep our eyes focused on the kingdom of God, when we, we have that kingdom living in us organically, we're going to be like a flight attendant in the midst of huge turbulence. I know how this, this plane's going to land. This plane's going to be fine. You know who, who's always scared? It's me. I'm like, no. <laughs> I, I, I'm, a, I'm a writer. I do a lot of writing. I have a very vivid imagination. Having a very vivid imagination comes in handy in front of a blank computer screen when you have to write. When you're at 35,000 feet in the midst of turbulence, a vivid imagination is not what you want. Yes. <laughs> Jesus brings calm. He's showing us in this moment how to operate in the midst of storms. So much that, can you believe Jesus was actually asleep during this? He wasn't even just not nervous. He was asleep. He was at peace. He was at rest in the midst of the storm. That is a place that God wants us to be. Where storms do not have us running around in terror and panic. Next slide, please. When we don't trust what God has said, it gives power to the storms swirling around us to wreak damage in our lives. That's, that's even worse, because a lot of times we can fuel storms. We can take a small storm and we can make it bigger. We can, we can take a little gusty wind and turn it into a tidal wave. Sometimes we can do it just with our words. I'm going to get to that more in just a moment. Next slide. And really when we look back at the trials and hardships with the view of a little hindsight, most storms like Typhoon Usagi tend to be blown way out of proportion anyhow. I've kind of joked a little bit how I'm getting a bit older since I've seen a lot of you. What I've enjoyed with getting older is I find that a lot of the things that used to cause a storm in my life when I was younger is not such a big deal anymore. It's, it's one of the advantages. I lose my eyesight, but I get a little more wisdom. So there's a trade-off, I think. Um, but I'm, I'm finding also, as I'm growing in the Lord, and as I'm understanding His eternal purposes, and as I'm understanding the call that God has. You know, 20 years ago, a lot of my understanding was how can I get people to receive Jesus and say a sinner's prayer? It really has evolved into a much deeper uh, calling, I feel, of bringing the kingdom of heaven into the lives of people. My, my passion is, of course, to get people to receive Jesus. But I find that there's so many people that have received Jesus but are flung all the time by storms in their lives. Because although they've received Jesus, they haven't bought in to the kingdom announcement that God has reordered society through Jesus. And he's calling us to live in a way that brings peace, not only to ourselves, but to those around us. See, it's not enough just to have victory over storms in our own lives. We often make a big mistake when we read this story. I know when I was younger when I would read this story, and I know many of us are familiar with it, even it goes back to Sunday school. This is a very familiar story. But we tend to always cast ourselves in the role of the disciples and how we have a lesson to learn about not letting storms affect our lives. But we have to see ourselves also in the role of Jesus. Jesus has called us to be his body. He's called us to be his ambassadors, to represent him and his kingdom to our church, our communities, our countries, and the world. So we're called to not only silence the storms in our own lives, but to be Jesus and calming the storms that are threatening the lives of people around us. Next slide. See, Jesus silenced a storm that was causing turmoil and fear with the people he loved. Jesus calls us to be his body, which means we are called to not only calm storms, but to also calm the storms that are raging in the lives around us. Next, next slide. 
See, as followers of Jesus, we're called to calm storms, not fuel them. I mentioned that earlier. When Tammy and I um, were trying to get back to Hong Kong, we um, initially with Yu Chung uh, International School, they didn't have a position in Hong Kong. They had a position for us in Qingdao, Qingdao, China. And um, we didn't really want to go to Qingdao. We wanted to come to Hong Kong, but I knew Asia enough. I knew if we got to Qingdao, we'd get to Hong Kong. And we did. <laughs> Um, but while we were there, we were part of our newest school, uh, uh, Yuchung International School of Qingdao. It was actually in Huangdao, which is across the bay from Qingdao. I don't know if many of you are familiar with the geography up there, but um, Qingdao has been around for a long time, and they're really trying to get development on the other side of the bay. So they asked our organization to start an international school so that international expats would be more open to coming there. The problem was that we found was that a lot of the teachers that were there, it was a new school, it was a pioneering school, we were in a temporary campus, so a lot of times the conditions and standards were not always what the international teachers coming to China for the first time were um, used to experiencing. And Tammy and I really got a first-hand look at how we have the power with our actions and our words to either fuel a storm or to calm a storm. I knew when somebody would say, I, I can't believe the conditions here. I can't believe they allow this or that or the other thing. I can say, you know, you're right. This is a bad thing and I, we gotta do something about it. I can fuel that storm or I can bring life. I, could, I can say, you know, everyone here is trying their best and I know it's not the, maybe the, the way we wanna see it now, but let's work together to, to see what we can do together to make a, a better situation. Um, Tammy and I quickly, within just a few months, I got asked to be the campus coordinator up there. Basically, I'd come in as the new person, they made me the boss over all the teachers, just under the principal, because the principal saw that we would bring life. When, when you're in a pioneering situation and you're leading it, you want people that are bringing life to a situation. Tammy would put on the wall of our, our flat in Qingdao, a little verse or a little phrase and would say, today are our, are our words bringing life or are they bringing death? We have an incredible power with just our lips to calm storms in people's lives. We are called to be like Christ. In those moments, we can bring life to a situation and we can watch a storm dissipate. It, it, it essentially has the equivalent of, I, I love Jesus, the, the peace be still. Just peace be still. Brings life. Next. Uh, it often doesn't take much. Simple words or a cup of coffee offered with love can calm even the biggest of life's storms. i tell you a story. Um, I, I, uh, I read a lot of Christian blogs, and somebody sent me a story just recently. Um, where a woman was, um, if you're familiar in America, we have the drive-through. Um, you drive through and you get your coffee at a Starbucks. And this woman was going into the drive-through lane at the same time as another person. And she got distracted with some, her dogs in the car. And when she looked up, she realized somebody else was trying to get in and thought that she was trying to jump ahead of her in the queue. So the woman started screaming very bad language to her and, and she was trying to explain with language she didn't see her and she was distracted and please go first. Well the lady roared with her car in front and, and in that moment um, I know a lot of us would feel um, like we, we were treated unfairly. This person was very unfair to us. They used very hurtful words. She, she mentioned some of the, she didn't use the exact words, but she said they were very hurtful words that the lady had screamed at her. But she really felt a compassion for this woman. She felt, obviously there's a storm brewing in her life and it's come out suddenly on her. So when, if you know how the drive through works, when she gets up to the, the speaker to put her order in, she says, the lady that's in front of me can you let her know that I want to pay for her order? I want to buy her her food and her coffee, and please tell her that I really hope she has a good day today. Well, 
she's watching the encounter and this lady is obviously the attendant's telling her the situation and the woman who had spoken the bad words looks back like what is this and then she takes her food and she drives off well when the Christian lady goes up to the attendant um, she said oh did you offer to pay for the food and she said yes I uh, she said to tell you that she felt so bad when I told you when I told her that you wanted to pay for her food she immediately felt horrible she said uh, you know please tell the lady behind me it's been a very bad day and please I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry and she said did you tell her I told her to say to have a good day and and she said yes and, and she said please tell her I, I will have a good day from this point on <laughs> and uh, and the woman conveying this story said when she got her food, she pulled into the, uh, the parking lot and she burst into tears because she had been praying, Lord, I really want to see people through your eyes. I want to see people the way that you see people. And she realized in that moment, even though she was a blessing to that person, this was God answering her prayers because deep down, what she was asking, Lord, help me to be you to other people. Help me to be like you were with the disciples in the boat when, when a storm was threatening them and causing panic. And obviously, we've all been there where something else is going on in our lives and it manifests itself in an attitude towards somebody who probably doesn't deserve it. This woman had the ability, as Christ, as his representative to silence the storm. I think that's just a beautiful, beautiful image of what um, is possible when we try to transform the culture around us. Like I said, I, it, that is probably the thing that I'm the most passionate about right now, is transforming culture. It's what I try to do at the school and the schools that I work with in China, is how do we transform people's culture. I'll, I'll finish with, with one last story. Um, a couple years ago, I was at a leadership meeting downtown in Central, and the person that was speaking was talking about this idea of transforming culture. And he was a speaker from America, and they were talking about how at their church, some of the things that they were doing to not just get people to receive Jesus, but to literally transform the culture and their community. And he told a similar Starbucks story. I don't know what's up with Starbucks, but all these great stories happen at Starbucks. <laughs> but um, the guy was in drive-thru, and he feels compelled to, pr to pay for the, the guy's coffee behind him. Just, just let the guy know behind him, I want to bless him today and pay for his coffee. This, this pastor's relating this story. This pastor from America. So uh, when, uh, when he drives off and the next guy drives up, the attendant tells the man, uh, that guy that just pulled off, he, he said that he wanted to bless you and he's paying for your coffee. And the guy said, uh, oh wow, well that's, that's amazing. That's, so I tell you what, since I was prepared to pay for my coffee, why don't you just tell the guy behind me I'll pay for his coffee. <laughs> and I don't have, I, I can't, the, the pastor said, you know how long, that this kept going. He said it actually got on the news. He said, he said, do you know how long it, it went? And this is him saying, I, I actually find it's hard to believe, but he said, I kid you not, this went on for six hours. Six hours. It's because when something is given, sacrificially given, in the manner that Christ does, it transforms, it creates a space where people's hearts are open. And... As I was coming home, I, was, I had to come back to the school. It was a lunchtime leadership, and I had to get back to work. Um, I'm coming up on the MTR from Central, and you know how crowded it gets, and people fight for chairs all the time. I, 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 I come to work every morning on the red line. I have to cross over the green line, and I just laugh at like people that look like they're 100 years old. When that door opens, they run across that platform, get their nose right up. <laughs> At that, and it's always a little comical to me. So as I'm coming up on this, um, and, and you all know what I'm talking about. We, we, uh, I'm on the MTR, and I had a seat because I was had got on fairly at the beginning of the um, the train, and uh, I thought I really I want to test this. I want to I want to find somebody. I want to give them my seat. I want to find you know, and but I want to find somebody that I can really bless today. 
and um, at Prince Edward, everybody came on board onto the Green Line, and I see this little old man, and I'm trying to get his attention. You know, I'm guy, I'm guy, and uh, I can't get it. He he won't look at me, and there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people, and everybody's noticing this except the man who I'm trying to give, and and. Uh, I think everybody else says, well, if he doesn't want the seat, we'll take it. And uh, so this, this gentleman comes to me and says in English, he says, are you trying to give your seat to that old man there, or the old man over there? And uh, I said, I am. He goes, well, I'll watch the seat for you. Why don't you, you can go ask him. So, um, so I get up and I go over to the man and I, I, my, can my Cantonese isn't very good and he didn't speak English, but I, I offered my seat to him and he motioned that he was getting off at Shep Kip May, the next stop, he didn't need it. And so the guy looked at me, he says, is he gonna take it? I said, no, he's getting off at Shep Kip May. So then he's looking, there's this empty seat and he goes, he goes well, do you want it back? And I said, well, no, I'm getting off at uh, Kowloon Tong. And, and I'm kind of yelling this and everybody's <laughs> witnessing this back and forth. I said, you take the seat, it's yours. But suddenly, he doesn't want to take it, you know? And so, he's offering it to everyone else and nobody wants the seat. <laughs> you know, the Bible says that Jesus didn't see Godhood as something to be grasped but that it was freely given. When something's freely given, see, we live where the MTR seats normally are something to be grasped. I have to fight you for it. <laughs> but when something is freely given, it transforms the space, because it's what Christ did. I saw the, 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 the culture on that MTR train, just for that moment, was transformed. This man, I could see when he finally took the seat, he was very uncomfortable taking it. <laughs> it with, with the risk of sounding melodramatic, in offering that chair, rather than grasping for it, it, it creates a sacred space. It creates something that's special. It transforms. And that's what Christ has asked us to do, is to bring out a culture of sacrifice, of giving, of preferring others before ourselves. Why? One, it's in his nature because he just loves us so much. But one, it also creates just a wonderful space where people's hearts are open to receive the love of God. So I want to share that with you. I want to end that. I, I thank you so much for allowing me to, to speak life to you today, to bring the word of God to you. Um, I love this church. You're, you're such a blessing to Hong Kong. I, I pray that, um, that what I've been able to share this morning will be a blessing. Um, if you allow me, I'll close in a word of prayer. Father God, um, I thank you so much for Lighthouse Church. I thank you for uh, Pastor Jennifer and Pastor Renee, Lord, as they are bringing life to the Philippines right now. Lord, I, I thank you that uh, I have the privilege of, of bringing your, your word and your message to the saints here at Lighthouse. And Father, I pray that, that this word, Lord, not be birthed in me, but birthed in your Holy Spirit. And that, Lord, that there would be something that was delivered today that would bring life, that would bring your life to, to the people here. Lord, uh, not just for themselves, but, Lord, so that they can take it and share it freely with those around them. Lord, let them take this life to, to Monday morning to work, to, uh, to, to strengthen them throughout the week. Lord, until they gather again together, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah.